Hello guys, uh, welcome to homework number 12. I'll go straight to sharing these problems right now on my screen. And the first problem we see there is the focus on concept question 01. Say which of the following statements correctly describes the Celsius and the Kelvin temperature scales. So what do we know about the Celsius and Kelvin temperature scales? What we know is the Celsius has zero degrees Celsius at the lower fixed point, which is the freezing point of water. And then we have the upper fixed point to be 100 degrees Celsius. But for a Kelvin scale, we have 273 Kelvin to 373 Kelvin. So they start differently, but they have the same degree intervals of 100 between the lower and the upper fixed point. So that's why the correct answer here, as we see, is C. So let's see what C says and why the others are wrong. Both scales assign the same temperature to the steam point, but they assign different temperatures to the ice points. That's not correct. So the steam point is the upper fixed point. The ice point is the lower fixed point. They don't have the same. This is zero and that's 100, this is 273 and that's 373. So A is wrong. B says the Celsius scale assign the same values to the ice and the steam points that the Kelvin scale, no way, that's not true. Then C, which is the correct one, the size of the degree on each scale is the same. So it's 100 in between the fixed points, 100 in between the fixed points. So the size of each degree is the same. Okay, so let's go to the next problem. So the drawing shows two thin rods, one made from aluminum. So we're giving the alpha, the linear expansivity for aluminum to be uh, 23 times 10 to the negative six. So I'll just keep writing those down. Times 10 to the negative six per Kelvin, if you like per degree Celsius. And then um, the uh, alpha for steel is 12 times 10 to the negative six per Kelvin or per degree Celsius. So you see the diagram there, they are, there's a midpoint in between them, but because they have different linear expansivities, when you heat them through the same heat, one of them will expand faster than the other. And the one that's gonna expand faster is the one with the highest linear expansivity, which is aluminum. So aluminum will expand further, so they won't meet at the midpoint, they will meet somewhere towards the right. That's why the correct answer is B, because aluminum will expand more than steel. Because aluminum has alpha 23, times the same power that uh, steel has 12 times the same power. So uh, aluminum will expand faster, so they will meet in the right part of the middle point, not the middle point, okay? Now, next problem, that was focus on cost, uh, concept question 02. Now I'm gonna question 14. The temperature of a 2.5 kilogram of water is 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, so I'm gonna put some values down. So I have mass of water to be 2.05 kilograms. Initial temperature theta i of water, or you can say T i of water, T initial of water is 34 degrees Celsius. Okay, now what's going to happen to cool the water? Ice is added to it, and the desired final temperature is 11 degrees Celsius. So T final is 11 degrees Celsius, and we add ice to this water. So we have the latent heat of fusion of ice, so we'll call L for ice is uh, 33.5 times 10 to the four times 10 to the four joules per kilogram. And then heat capacity of water, C for water is 4186 joules per kilogram per kelvin. Okay, so we are looking for uh, how much of mass of ice? You're looking for mass of ice to be added to make this to happen. Okay, so let's go back to the problem and start solving this problem. So we're gonna do the principle of mixture. So we know that heat gained by ice in melting equals heat lost by water to go to 11 degrees Celsius. So the only thing, so heat gain equals heat loss. That's the basic principle. So what is gaining heat and what is losing heat? So the water is the one, you know, losing heat because it was at 34 before the ice came. So this is mass of water, specific capacity of water, T final minus T initial for water. That's the only thing. Then the heat loss is from the ice, but the ice lost heat in two ways. It was first of all ice at zero degrees Celsius. So it's gonna be mass of ice times specific capacity, a latent heat of ice for ice to melt Plus, after the ice has melted, still at zero degrees Celsius, water now, no longer ice of the same mass, will now gain heat up to, you know, uh, 
uh, what is it called now? Uh, will gain heat up to 11 degrees Celsius, the final temperature. So actually, um, it is the, sorry, it is the water that's losing heat and the ice is gaining heat, okay? Bye bye. So the ice is gaining heat, that's why it's melting. The water is losing heat, that's why it's going from 34 to 11, okay? So heat loss by water in going from 34 degrees Celsius to 11 degrees Celsius on the left, uh, left hand side equals heat gained by ice. First of all, to melt at zero degrees Celsius, no temperature change, latent heat, plus mass of ice, specific capacity of ice, what is ice becomes water. Temperature change, T final minus T initial for ice. Okay, so this is the problem. So this is melting and then gaining. So here, mass of water is given 2.05 times 4186 times 34 minus 11 equals mass of ice, we don't know, latent heat of fusion of ice, 33.5 times 10 to the 4. So this guy is going to add to plus mass of ice, we don't know. Now ice has melted to water, 4186. Temperature change is going from 11, from 0 to 11. So 11 minus 6. When it was 0 to 11, the final temperature of the mixture. So this will so we'll find mass of ice. So we're going to do this carefully. So you grab your calculator and do 34 minus 11. That's 23 times 4186 times 2.05. 197369.9. So 197369.9 equals 33.5000 mi plus 11 times 4186 mi. 46046 mi. So now I add these two together 46046 plus 3350000381046 mi so i have 3850046 mass of ice equals 197369.9 so what is mass of ice mass of ice equals 197369.9 divided by that guy 381046. Okay. It's 381046, not 385. Okay. 197369.9 divided by that. One nine seven three six nine point nine. So we have zero point five two. Let's see if that exactly what they have there. Zero point five two kilograms. That's exactly the answer we have there. Okay, zero point five two kilograms. So let me go back and share this screen. 0 0.052 kilograms, and that's how you get it. So the heat lost by water equals heat gained by ice. But the heat gained by ice is of two parts, melting of ice to water at zero degrees Celsius, which is latent heat. You separate it from, after it has melted, the same mass of ice going straight to 11 degrees Celsius as water itself. Okay. Next problem is focus on concept question 16. It says, during a brisk run, an adult human generates heat at a rate of about 1240 watts. So I'm going to write that here. 1240 watts is the power, which is in joules per second. Okay. Uh, to remove this heat by evaporative cooling, what mass of water per second must be evaporated from the body as sweat? The latent heat of vaporization is given at 37 degrees Celsius. 
24.2 times 10 to the five, okay? So this guy is, is vaporizing this water uh, and we have the latent heat of fusion for sweat. 24.2 times 10 to the five joules per kilogram. So we are vaporizing. So this joules per second, is that okay? This joules per second that we have there will be equals mass times latent heat over time. That's it energy over time equals one, two, four, zero. So mass over time times latent heat, two, four point two times 10 to the five equals one, two, four, zero. So what is mass over time? Mass over time just becomes one, two, four, zero divided by two, four point two times 10 to the five. And that will give you a very small number. Let's see if it gives us what we have there. Oh, sorry, I didn't stop sharing. So we are given the power, one, two, four, zero, in joules per second. We are given the latent heat of vaporization, 24.2 times 10 to the five. So the latent heat loss per second, mass and latent capacity. So there's no temperature change because it's vaporizing. It's not changing, no temperature change. So, so we're not doing specific heat, we're doing latent heat. So, but we're going to add time to it because we have, we are not giving joules, we're giving joules per second. So we're going to put per second on that because we want mass per second. So I'm calculating mass over time times latent heat given equals this power, joules per second. So this lit, uh, mass over time becomes that power, one, two, four, zero divided by that. So let's do one, two, four, zero divided by, divided by, Two, four, two, one, two, three, four zeros. Zero point triple zero five. Yep. Zero point zero 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 five kilogram per second. I think that's exactly what they have there. When I share the screen again, exactly kilogram per second. That's exactly what they have there. So we'll go to the next problem. And it says, uh, uh, to chapter 12, problem 05. Dermatologists often remove small precancerous skin lesions or lesions by freezing them quickly with liquid nitrogen, which may have a temperature as low as that. What is the temperature on Celsius? So they want you to convert 75.4 Kelvin to Celsius and then Fahrenheit, okay? So we know, okay, I'm gonna stop sharing, 75.4 Kelvin to Celsius. So when you're converting to Celsius, T in Celsius equals T in Kelvin minus 273. That's how you do it. Okay, so we have uh, what we are converting to Celsius is 75.4 Kelvin. So this is 75.4 minus 273. So you do that. 75.4 minus 273. One, minus 197.6. Celsius. Now we can go from degree Celsius to degree Kelvin. From that, we know that one degree Celsius is nine over five degree Fahrenheit. So we can go from degree Celsius to degree Fahrenheit. So one minus 197.6 degree Celsius becomes minus 197.6 times nine over five degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So the answer we just got times nine divided by five. Minus 355.7 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Minus 355.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, Let me come back here to make sure our answer is right. 
Yep. There's a, a little difference in uh, there's a little difference in answer here. Let me share the answer they have and see. Uh huh. Oh yes. There's a plus thirty two here. That's the part that I missed. The beginning. So degree Celsius is nine over five degrees Fahrenheit. Is that okay? But you have to add thirty two. So here we have minus three fifty five point seven. So we have to add thirty two to that. Okay, plus thirty two actually. So you do this plus 32. So by the time we add 32 to that, minus 355.7 plus 32. Yes, we get minus 323.68, which is minus 324, which is what they have exactly here. So let me share this again. Yep. So don't forget the plus 32, please, okay? All right, because it, it goes from 32 degrees Fahrenheit in lower frequency to about 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So we can share this, but we'll have to add the base of 32 to the share of the degrees interval, okay? Okay. The next problem, uh, chapter 12, problem 10, says um, a steel section of the Alaskan pattern had a length of 60.3 meters. So I'm going to write uh, these numbers down. So it's steel. So steel, we know the alpha for steel is at 12 times 10 to the 6, 10 to the point negative 6 degrees Celsius or per Kelvin. So the initial length, L initial, is 60.3 meters. And initial temperature T initial is 24 degrees Celsius. So you actually find the change in length when the temperature drops to minus 34.4. So T final minus 34.4 degrees Celsius. So we asked to find L2 minus L1, the change. But we, now we have to uh, solve this problem using what we know from linear expansivity alpha to be L2 minus L1 over L1, which is like L initial, if you like. T initial, T final minus T initial, okay. Good, so now our alpha is given 12 times 10 to the power negative six. We are looking for delta L, which is L2 minus L1 over L1, 60.3. Final minus 34.4 minus initial minus 24. Uh -huh. So we're going to multiply this, guys. Is that okay? Minus 34.4 minus 24 will give us minus 58.4 times 60.3. So my del L is minus 58.4 times 60.3 times 12 times 10 to the power negative six. Okay, so just multiply that. The negative sign just tells you that it's a contraction. Is that okay? It's not an expansion, it's a con contraction. So I'll do 58.4 times 60.3 times 12. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm get, uh, Minus 0 0.042. So minus 0 0.042 meters. So the negative sign just shows it's a contraction. So let me share and see if the answer is correct. And I see that's the exact answer they have there, minus 0 0.042 meters. Okay. Let me share that immediately. Yeah, 0 0.042 meters. So the negative sign just tells you that it's a contraction in case they need the sign right there. So it's freezing, it's contracting, it's not expanding. So let's go to the next problem. 
It says uh, a commonly used method of fastening one part to another part is called shrink fitting. A steel rod has a diameter of that and the flat plate contains a hole. Whose diameter is that? The rod is cooled so that it just fits into the hole. When the rod warms up, the enormous thermal stress exerted by the plates hold the rod securely to the plate. By how many degrees Celsius should the rod be cooled? So we are looking for delta T. So this is still steel. This is still steel. So we're going to use our alpha for steel, which we know. Alpha for steel is um, 12 times 10 to the power of 6 per degree Celsius. So the diameter is uh, 2.037. OK. So we have a rod, is that okay? And we have a plate, so diameter of rod is 2.0037 centimeters. Diameter of uh, plate is two centimeters, okay? So the rod is cooled so that it fits into the hole. Then when the rod warms up, the enormous thermal stress is added by the plate, holds the rod securely to the plate. Okay. By how many Celsius should the rod be cooled? So we want to see by how many Celsius the rod has to be cooled to get to 2.037. Is that okay? 2.037. So let me stop sharing. So we want to go from 2.037 to 2. Is that okay? From 2.037 to 2. So we're gonna have our del L to be 2.037 minus 2, 0 0.037, okay? Uh, 0 0.0037 centimeters. So they're asking us for delta T. From here, we know delta T is delta L over alpha L initial. So delta T, which is this guy, is delta L, which is on top, alpha L initial, okay? 0 0.0037 over alpha is uh, 12 times 10 to the power negative six times the initial 2.0037. Yep. So let's do that and see what we get. Point zero zero three seven divided by twelve divided by two point zero zero three seven is that times ten to the six. Okay. Um, let's make sure we're not missing anything here. This point zero zero three seven. Okay. divided by 12. Yep, that gives us uh, 153.9 degrees Celsius. That's exactly what they have there, okay? 153.9 degrees Celsius. If you do that calculation carefully, let me share the screen again. Yep, and that's what you get. So it doesn't matter if you convert to meters or not because the conversion is gonna cancel from both sides um, up and down, okay. Here yeah, the next problem, um, it says uh, an ice chest at a beach party contains 12 cans of soda at 4.79 degrees Celsius. Each can of soda has a mass of 0.35 kilograms. So let me just get the mass of the 12 cans. Right here, before we start solving the problem. So mass of soda is 12 cans times 0.35 kilograms, okay? And then initial temperature of soda 4.79 degrees Celsius.
So Z capacity of that C soda is 3,800 joules per kilogram per Kelvin or per degree Celsius, if you like. Someone add 6.19 kilogram watermelon. So mass of watermelon, 6.19 kilograms. And initial temperature of watermelon, 25.4 degrees Celsius. So it's very capacity of watermelon is in it, like the same of, as, as water. So 4186 uh, joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Degree Celsius, if you like. So they want you to find the final temperature of soda, and so we're looking for T final of the mixture. Oh, good. So this is a simple problem. The answer they got is 17.54. So let's put that in our mind before we solve. So to solve this problem, so the watermelon is going to be the one to lose heat because it's at a higher temperature. And then the soda will gain heat because it's at a lower temperature. So heat gained by soda is mass of soda, basic capacity of soda, T final minus T initial of soda, equals heat lost by watermelon, mass of watermelon, specific capacity of watermelon, T final minus T initial of watermelon. That's all. But in this case, the final temperature will be greater than that of soda. But the final temperature will be lesser than that of watermelon. So here is going to be T initial watermelon minus T final, just so you have a positive number here. Okay. So your temperature change is always the higher minus the lower one. So this becomes 12 times 0 0.35 for mass of soda times 3800, specific capacity of soda times temperature change T final, which is greater than 4.97 equals mass of watermelon, 6.19. So it's capacity of watermelon, 4186. Temperature change, 25.4 minus T final, because it's going to be less than 25.4 as it's going to lose heat towards that. OK, so you just find TF from here. So let's take our calculators and work this out. Working this out with our calculators, 12 times 0.35 times 3,800, 15,960. So 15,960 times 4.97, 79,321.2, 79,321.2. Equals 6.19 times 4186 times 25.4 658148.036 minus. Twenty-five nine one one point three four T five. Good. So now we can find T final. So one five nine six zero T final plus twenty-five nine one one point three four T final equals six five eight one four eight point zero three six plus seven nine three two one point two. Plus one five nine six zero four one eight seven one point three four T five equals that guy plus that guy six one six five eight four six five eight one four eight point zero three six plus seventy nine three two one point two. 737469.236. So T final becomes this guy. 
divided by 4187134. Seventeen point six point six degrees Celsius. That's exactly what we got. Let's see what they got. I think they got seventeen point five four. So close. Yeah. So that's about it. What you expect to get right there. So let's share our screen again. So that was problem, chapter 12, problem 45. Now we're going to chapter 12, problem 50. So it says, when you drink cold water, your body must expend metabolic energy in order to maintain normal body temperature by warming up the water in your stomach. Could drinking ice water then substitute for exercise as a way to burn calories? Suppose you expend 40, 480 kilocalories during a brisk hour long walk. How many liters of ice water would you have to drink in order to use up 480 kilocalories of metabolic energy. For comparison, the stomach can hold about one liter. Okay. So they have 13 liters as their answer. So you just want to convert 480 kilocalories. Is that okay? Uh, to maintain that, okay? Okay. So we're gonna use, um, we're gonna convert that into, let's see. So we have the volume of water given, okay? So we have to find the mass of that, is that okay? From the mass, we know the density so we can get the volume. So that's what's happening right here, okay? So I will need some constants. Let me check. Um, they didn't give us the constant here that we need. Okay. So we're gonna use um, the constant for water, basically. 4186 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So let's see how much, how many liters of ice water you're gonna drink that will take mass of ice water times 4186 times temperature change 34 minus zero, because it's gonna go from zero to 34 to give you 480 kilocalories. So let me stop sharing. 480 kilocalories is 480 times, you know, 4186 joules is one kilocalorie or one food calorie. So it cancels the kilocalorie here. Okay, so now let's see mass of ice water that we need. So it's 480 times 4186 divided by 4186 times 34, okay? So it's just 480 divided by 34. So if we do that, Four eighty divided by thirty four. Fourteen point one one to fourteen point one one kilograms of water. Now density is mass over volume. So volume is mass over density, which is fourteen point one one divided by the density of water is one thousand. So zero point zero point uh, Zero one four one one. So this is in meter cube. So one liter is ten to the three, ten to the minus three meter cube. Okay. So this meter cube will be how many liters? So we'll have to divide by ten to the minus three. That will give us one, two, three, fourteen point one liters. 14.1 liters. So let's see what they have. Oh, sorry, I'm using 34, he used 37. 37 degrees Celsius is what they use uh, for normal body temperature, not 34. So this is 37. So 480 divided by 37. Twenty-eight. 
12.97. So it's 13. Approximately 13 kilograms. Is that okay? So now, if you take that 13 kilograms, normally people take for water, the amount of kilograms is the same as the liters. So from here, you can easily tell 13 kilograms of water will have 13 liters. But you have to get the density to get the volume and then convert the volume. So this would be 0 0.013 meter cube. So if you convert that to liters, you get to be 13 liters, which is exactly what they have there, okay? This is exactly what they have there. So let me share again and go to the next problem. All right. So we just finished this problem and we got the 13 liters. So this is problem 12, uh, chapter 12, problem 53. The box of a well-known breakfast cereal states that one ounce of the cereal contains 114 calories. One food calorie is that. If 1.78% of this energy could be converted by a weight lifter's body into work done in lifting the barbell. So you're lifting the barbell, your work done is weight of the barbell times the height you lift it, MDH, equals. So this is the weight of the barbell. Weight of barbell times height equals you convert 1.78% of your energy. So the weight times the height is given to be two meters. So two times the weight is the work done. Okay. Um, equals 1.78 over 100 times 114 calories. So let me stop sharing so you see what I'm doing. So weight of the barbell is mg times the height lifted is the work done, mgh. So it's weight, mg times h. The height is given to be two meters times the weight. So two ice times weight is equal to the energy, 1.78% 1 of 104 full calories. 4186 is one food calorie. So, so this is food calories, 114. So food calories cancel food calories. So the weight just becomes 1.78 times 114 times 4186 divided by two times 100. Okay. So when I do that, 1.78 times 114 times 4186 divided by 200, 427. So I have uh, 4247, 424, 4247 Newtons. So let's check if that answer is correct. 4247, exactly what they have here, 4247, okay? So I'm gonna share that. That's exactly what they have here, okay. Now we'll go to the last problem. And it says a rock of mass that falls from rest from a height of that. So we're gonna convert MGH of this into a pail containing 0 0.4 kilograms of water. Then the rock and water now gain heat, so MGH, is going to convert to mass of rock, specific capacity of rock, temperature change in rock, T final minus T initial of rock, plus mass of water, specific capacity of water, temperature change final, T final minus T initial of water. So these are always solving, basically. Okay, so I'm going to put my parameters down. The rock, mass of rock is given to be 0 0.207 kilograms. Mass of water is given to be 0 0.407, okay. So they just want a specific capacity of rock, C rock is giving us 1890 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. We know specific capacity of water, 4186 joules per kilogram per degree Celsius. So they ask us to find the rise in temperature. So I'll stop sharing. So we're looking for this T final minus T initial for both, because they're gonna have the same rise in temperature, assuming they both have the same initial temperature. So MGH 0 0.207 for the rock times 9.8 times 
I forgot to take note of the height it fell from, 19.1 meters, that's what it says. 19.1 equals mass of rock 0 0.207. Specific capacity of rock is given to be 1890 times delta T, temperature change, equals mass of water 0 0.407. The sea capacity of water, 4186 times delta T. So we're looking for delta T. Okay. So I'm going to multiply these guys. When 207 times 9.8 times 19.1, 38 38.74626. equals 0 0.207 times 1890 391.23 delta t plus 0 0.407 times 4186 0.407, delta T. So I add this two plus 391.23. So 2094.932 delta T equals 38.74626. So what's delta T? 8.74626 divided by this guy. Zero point zero one eight degrees Celsius. That's what I have. Let's see if that's what they have. Zero point zero one eight exactly. Zero point zero one eight five degrees Celsius exactly what they have there. So it's this guy divided by 2094.932. So that's how you solve uh, these problems and uh, that marks the end of the problems for this chapter. I'll see you guys uh, for chapter 13. Have a good one guys.